So this handsome gentleman right here is none other than the great French icon, Pierre Bale, um, born in 1647 in Carle le Comte, which was a commune in southwestern France and raised under Calvinist minister of a father. Uh, Bale's life was immersed in religious discourse and philosophical debate from his birth, pretty much. Um, he studied for a while and then around France, eventually became a Catholic, which was uh, an interesting period of his life, but a brief one, um, and eventually uh, returned to Calvinism shortly after. Um, he found himself as a tutor and then began um, teaching philosophy at the Protestant Academy of Sedan. And then he eventually moved to Rotterdam, which is where the bulk of his um, career as a teacher um, was held. And uh, he was writing prolifically throughout his academic tenures. Um, Bale released various thoughts on the occasion of a comet, uh, which was a piece that basically described or it connected um, the lack of divinity within comets to what he desired um, to be a lack of divinity in the government, basically saying that comets are naturally occurring. Um, they don't have any you know, divinity behind them. There's no God. God is not guiding comets. They occur naturally. And so therefore, government should also be guided naturally. Um, it was basically just an argument for secularism within government. Um, and this piece naturally caused a lot of uproar, as any philosophical piece uh, advocating for secularism did. Uh, Bale was accused of being an atheist, which is not true. Um, just like most philosophers at this time, uh, the moment you critiqued religion, you were thought to be an atheist, but most weren't. Um, but nonetheless, uh, Bale continued uh, his critiques on religion, despite the criticism he received. And um, he, although he did have a particularly lengthy feud with uh, his colleague, Pierre Giroux, um, and that feud would actually lead to him being fired. Um, and when he was fired, his life pretty much went downhill from there. Uh, his father and brother died, and he was also imprisoned um, due to his um, due to his works. Um, so not exactly the best time in his life, essentially rock bottom. But uh, that's pretty much uh, needed for any philosopher to be truly great. You know, a great deal of suffering is needed. And so... Um, nonetheless, despite those setbacks, um, Bale would go on to write his most critically acclaimed work and his magnum opus, uh, his dictionary. And um, his dictionary was a unique body of work, uh, especially for its time. Uh, it was less of a compilation of philosophical essays, as was typical, and more of an encyclopedia. Uh, it had a lot of citations, a lot of quotes. Um, it was just it, it had an unorthodox format. Um, and of course, its actual subject matter, which was just tackling on the topical issues of the time, was not at all common. I mean, it, it was, this was, you know, a, a lengthy piece, literally tackling on virtually every you know, popular orthodox belief at the time. Um, but it wasn't aimlessly just trying to dismantle it. It was more of, let's pick at these um, ideologies for a better understanding. And so uh, Bale's Dictionary, when it was released, it was released to critical acclaim uh, and it was incredibly influential. Um, he did, uh, it, he did, of course, draw more criticism because he was, again, attacking the most popular beliefs at the time as going to warrant uh, many enemies. But he also gathered many fans and he immortalized himself with a dictionary, regardless of whether people hated it or loved it. Um, it was, again, one of a kind, um, but it also revealed uh, well, not that it was unknown at the time, but it just amplified um, his status as a true scholar and true philosopher. Uh, but his dictionary um, would just result in more heated debates with particularly rationalist theologians, 
uh, like Bernard, Jacquelot, Leclerc, who were constant enemies of his. Um, although he did also uh, influence Leibniz in um, creating the theodicy, um, although not necessarily in the sense that Leibniz agreed with him, of course. This is more that Leibniz disagreed so heavily that he created the theodicy. But the point is, uh, he was, again, uh, a significant component in fueling um, the creation of the theodicy, um, although Bale did tackle that issue um, and the problem of evil within his dictionary, which was, again, what really riled Leibniz up. But um, after releasing the dictionary, he then uh, pretty much just continued uh, going back and forth with rational theologians uh, until his death, roughly 20 years after uh, the dictionary's publication. Um, but his I mean, the, the end of his life was fairly peaceful. He died of hard complications, but nothing too gruesome or violent. Um, and his life was not exactly uh, the saddest or the happiest, but I think it's a nice middle ground. You know, uh, he had his fair deal of suffering, but he also was, you know, well renowned, even though many people did take issue with his stances. He was well respected among most of his contemporaries and um, that is the life of French legend Pierre Bale.